Sup, chooms? So today, we're going to be talking about masturbation, also known as spanking the monkey, also known as fapping, also known as flying the kite. Specifically, we're going to be talking about whether or not jerking off can cause hair loss. So this is obviously a very awkward subject to talk about, but surprisingly, this has been a highly requested subject for a while, so I've decided to look balls deep into this and see if there's any possibility that the hormonal changes that occur while choking the chicken can turn us into slime. Heads. So, as it turns out, there are several studies on the effects of masturbation and orgasm in general on hormone levels, including the trash hormone DHT, which of course causes hair loss. The studies all seem to have similar results though, so I'll just present a few of them here today. So, the first one is old, very old in fact, it's from 1976, and is entitled, quote, Endocrine Effects of Masturbation in Men, unquote. The study was done in Sweden, so what was the rationale for the study? Quote, it is common practice in hospitals and fertility clinics for semen specimens to be provided by masturbation, unquote. Since they wanted to test different fertility agents in men during that era, they wanted to make sure masturbation itself didn't affect plasma and semen hormone levels. So go ahead and picture men masturbating to give sperm samples at a Swedish fertility clinic for a moment and just let that sink in. Anyways, that's the rationale for doing the study and here's what they did. Essentially, they looked at various hormone levels in the plasma before and after masturbation. So this is some pretty spicy methodology here. They write, quote, the results obtained were then compared with those of a smaller control experiment carried out on a number of the same subjects who volunteered for the study. In this control study, the psychological preparation for masturbation was encouraged, but the physical act was not carried out, unquote. So these poor control subjects thought they were going to masturbate but bait, but they were just cock teased by the Swedish nurses. So let's go ahead and focus in more on the actual methods. There were 34 volunteers aged 18 to 20, so very young men whose peckers were probably all functioning nominally. They all took blood samples and then they masturbated to whatever men liked to fap to back in the 1970s, you know, maybe like some sticky old magazines since they didn't have the internet back then, and they then took the semen samples for analysis and then another blood sample. The time period between the two samples was between 9 and 40 minutes minutes. And you know, I'm not sure how it took 40 minutes, but I hope they had plenty of lube or else that would have left a wicked monkey rash. But overall, this was a pretty simple methodology here. But to make sure any changes they saw were due to the actual act of masturbation, they took 11 subjects from the volunteers and told them they were doing the same study again. But this time they tricked them and did not actually have them masturbate, which probably gave them a nasty case of the blue balls, but the researchers took two blood samples anyways. I mean, who knows what kind of effect teasing and denying a bunch of horny young stallions would have on their endocrine system, but whatever. So, the hormones they measured were pregnenolone, dehydroepiandosterone, aka DHA, androstenedione, dione, testosterone, DHT, estrone, estradiol, and luteinizing hormone, also known as LH. In the semen, they made the same measurement, so we're talking about some pretty nasty work here. But getting to the results, you can see that every single hormone measured increased after masturbation, except for luteinizing hormone, which did increase, but the increase was not significant. The biggest changes were in pregnenolone and DHA levels, and for those who don't know what, pre uh, what those are, pregnenolone, what it is, is that it's essentially just a precursor to most other steroid hormones, including androgens and estrogens, and DHA is dehydroepiandosterone, which is another precursor hormone to testosterone. Pregnenolone should not be confused, though, with pregnenolone, which is a neurosteroid that the PFS neckbeards like to fearmonger about all the damn time. So basically, what they were doing here, the researchers, uh, is that they were just measuring uh, all the steroid hormones here, including the precursor hormones to testosterone as well as estrogen. They also looked at the correlation of testosterone levels with DHT and estradiol levels before and after masturbation, and they found that testosterone levels correlated with DHT and estrogen levels, which isn't surprising since DHT is, after all, just a shitty metabolite of testosterone, and most estrogen in men is also a metabolite of testosterone through the aromatization pathway Although unlike DHT, estrogen surprisingly still has some uses in men, such as being important for bone, joint, and cardiovascular health. It's interesting, though, that they didn't find any correlation of these levels with the duration of masturbation, except for testosterone levels. The testosterone level was highest with a masturbation duration of 20 minutes, then it fell afterwards. So there are diminishing gains with masturbation. So don't think you can just jerk off all day and then you can end up looking like Eric Bugenhagen or something. 
So as it turns out, just anticipating masturbation alone had no effect on the hormone levels of the subject. So you actually need to do the five knuckle shuffle in order to have any kind of effect on hormone levels. So it's clear the effects aren't just psychological or neurological, but rather they're physical. And the researchers also state that the semen hormone levels correlated with the plasma levels. But since there was only one semen sample and two plasma samples, I'm not really sure what they mean by this. And anyways, I don't think it really matters that much since semen hormone levels are not what we're concerned with. I mean, after all, we don't have jizz flowing through our veins. We have blood and plasma throwing th flowing through our veins. So not to leave the ladies out who like to flick their bean, there's also a study about masturbation and women from 1999 entitled, quote, cardiovascular and endocrine alterations after masturbation induced orgasm in women, unquote. By this time, though, a number of studies on masturbation had already been done on humans. So to quote the paper, quote, However, the findings to date of experiments conducted in humans are equivocal, thus knowledge in the area is far less advanced than our knowledge about animals, unquote. So, to shed, some on, to shed some light on this, the investigators recruited 10 healthy female volunteers through an advertisement. Their average age was 24.8 years, and the women were paid 100 Deutschmarks for participation in the study, which back in 1999 wasn't even enough money to buy a used PS1 game. These days, a woman just needs to masturbate on OnlyFans to become a millionaire, so things have certainly gotten better for women since then. Anyways, each subject underwent two sessions, but don't get too excited yet, because the first session was just a control session during which a boring film about the culture of Nepal was shown for 60 minutes. And during the film, blood was drawn continuously. So I doubt anybody could jerk off to that, but that was the point of it being that it was just a control session. So for the experimental session, this is where things get a little bit steamy because in the middle of the boring Nepalese film, suddenly, without warning, the researchers started playing a hardcore pornographic film and the women were asked to masturbate to orgasm. And without any hesitation, they did so for the good of science and God bless them for that. So, in addition to drawing blood samples continuously, they measured heart rate and blood pressure every 30 seconds. And they also put a device in their vaginas to monitor vaginal vasocongestion and also to assess sexual arousal. The women were then asked to rate the quality of their orgasm on a five-point scale, with five being sex with Henry Cavill and one being sex with Jason Blaha. So, let's get to the juicy results of this exciting study, shall we? The pornographic film was pretty pornographic because the women ended up scoring it 4.4 out of 5, so definitely not the kind of porn you'd want to watch with the curtains open. However, the duration and intensity of orgasm only turned out to be average, ranging anywhere between 2 and 3 out of a total score of 5. And for those parameters, I guess that's a good thing, because if women could get a 5 out of 5 orgasm just from fapping, then that would probably make men pretty obsolete, wouldn't it? So anyways, the vagina meter thing they had up their vaginas, or whatever it's called, did show significant sexual arousal in the women. However, they don't mention if there's any sexual arousal during the film on the culture of Nepal, which probably isn't necessary, but I can't help but admit that I'm slightly curious about that. Well, to nobody's surprise, the heart rate and blood pressure rose during sexual arousal, and the adrenal hormones, including epinephrine and norepinephrine, also went up. Interestingly, though, cortisol levels decreased pretty steadily, even during the arousal state. So maybe masturbation is a stress reliever, or maybe it's because of that boring Nepalese culture film. Who knows? As for the pituitary hormones, the biggest increase was in prolactin, which is a hormone that has many roles, but it also reduces sexual desire, which explains why most people get a refractory period after sex or masturbation. It's really interesting, though, that just like in men, testosterone increased with arousal. However, the major female hormone, estradiol, did not increase. So the authors conclude that surprisingly, the hormone effects of masturbation on women are similar to men. And we saw this from the study from 1976, as well as other similar studies, which pretty much just confirms that this data is pretty reliable since the results were reproduced after all. But the problem with these studies, though, is that most likely these changes are very transitory and any changes in testosterone, dihydrotestosterone, and estrogen levels that might have any effect on hair are too short acting to mean anything. I mean, after all, we don't see women develop facial hair and deep voices because they masturbate a lot, so we shouldn't expect men to accelerate their hair loss through masturbation either. But there is a big movement nowadays, which is known as the no fat movement, that argues that too much masturbation is bad for you and that abstinence from porn, masturbation, and ejaculation has many health benefits. So there are a lot of claims made about the benefits of abstaining from masturbation, and some of them are frankly so outlandish I doubt they could ever be ver verified through any kind of scientific study. So let's go ahead and look at a study that examines masturbation after three weeks of sexual abstinence and how it affects the endocrine system. Well, 
First of all, it's pretty hard for me to imagine that in this day of age that any man would be able to resist busting a nut for three weeks when all men have easy access to things like escorts as well as the most degenerate, disgusting porn imaginable at our fingertips through our smartphones. But this was back in 2001, which is when we still had dial-up modem porn when you had to wait like 30 minutes to see a picture of a woman's boobs. So it is believable in this context. So anyways, the study is entitled, quote, Endocrine Response to Masturbation-Induced Orgasm in Healthy Men Following a Three-Week Sex sexual abstinence, unquote. First off, we can see that this paper is from the same authors in the same medical school in Hanover, Germany, as in the last paper, so it may be like the main interest in these researchers is in the subject of masturbation. So this time, instead of looking at women masturbating, what they did is that they looked at 10 men, specifically aged 22 to 29 years old, and each of the subjects masturbated at the beginning of the study, and then again after a three-week period of abstinence. And there was no control put in place with the study to prevent the men from cheating, like they didn't have to wear a chastity device or anything like that. So it's really just a matter of honesty, so we'll have to take this part of the study on faith alone. But anyways, the methods were pretty much the same as for the study with women, as in that they got the men to watch what the researchers describe as a, quote, emotionally neutral documentary film, unquote. And my guess as to what the nature of this documentary film was is that it was probably just the same documentary film about Nepalese culture that the women watched, but after the 1999 study, the government of, uh, the government of Nepal might have been a little bit upset that their culture was being used in a study about masturbation, so the researchers this time omitted that fact to avoid being perceived as culturally insensitive. But anyways, like with the women, in the middle of the film, the researchers decided to sneak in a 20-minute pornographic film, and the men were asked to masturbate, although hopefully not altogether. So again, the researchers drew blood continuously to measure hormone levels in the fapping men, and the men, like the women, were asked to review the film and their orgasm on a five-point scale, with five being Megan Fox and one being Caitlyn Jenner. Heart rate and blood pressure were also monitored here, so overall the parameters for this study were very similar to the women's study, which is good because it makes it easy to assess the results. So as for how the men ranked the film, it turns out they didn't actually rate the film, but it must have been better than the women's film because we are getting some pretty good arousal score scores here, as you can see in this graph. And as expected, after abstinence, the men reported better orgasms than without abstinence, though the time to orgasm was not changed. Prolactin levels were unsurprisingly elevated with masturbation, but no different before or after abstinence. So whether you jack off three times per day or three times per month, you'll still get the same prolactin spike after orgasm. However, Interestingly here, testosterone levels after abstinence were higher throughout the session even before the porno film began and remained higher throughout masturbation. So with regards to cardiovascular health changes and adrenal hormonal changes like epinephrine and norepinephrine, there were increases in heart rate, blood pressure, and increases in the adrenal hormones with masturbation as you would expect, but no difference before and after abstinence. So the only thing that really changed with abstinence besides the quality of the orgasms was that testosterone was significantly higher after abstinence. Granted, these levels are not high enough for any kind of ergogenic benefit, like you'd see like improved sports performance or anything. And also the changes are very temporary, but it is plausible that abstaining from orgasm for a long enough period of time could have some libidinous benefits, such as a higher sex drive. So who knows? Maybe the NoFap crew has a point here. But anyways, the authors propose that this increased testosterone may have been related to increased anticipation of sexual activity after abstinence. So Looking at these three studies, all these effects of masturbation on androgens appear to be too minimal and too transitory to affect the hair follicles. I mean, after all, hair loss happens in cycles. And keep in mind, a single growth cycle for hair uh, for hair growth takes six months, so no hormonal changes from masturbation could possibly be prolonged long enough to influence the hair growth cycle in any way. So looking at this data, even though it is interesting, I don't think masturbation or frequent sex or even abstinence can have any hormonal effect great enough to affect your hair, considering how long the growth cycle of your hair follicles last. So ultimately, I think in the context of just hair loss, I think masturbation and orgasms are all benign, but that shouldn't be interpreted as me thinking that factors like porn, masturbation, and frequent orgasm don't have any potential negative effects on the human organism at all. I mean, sex can be an addiction, and if you find yourself masturbating every day or hiring escorts on a regular basis just to get off and feel normal, then at that point, sexual activity becomes more 
like a habit or a drug addiction rather than a pleasurable indulgence. So even though it isn't related to hair loss, I think a lot of men could benefit from learning to control their sexual impulses and making the moments when they do orgasm more meaningful, such as with a sexual partner you have an emotional connection with rather than just uh, spitting in your hand while watching porn online or engaging in risky sexual behavior with strangers and prostitutes. But that's an entirely different subject, so I think I'm going to go ahead and end it here. And until then, stay safe, chooms. See ya.